So we're very uh, handsome, healthy young men, and what we're doing is we're treating precancerous lesions. Now, precancerous lesions are also called actinic keratosis, uh, also solar keratosis. Why solar? Why actinic? Because it's related to the sun. They are, depending on the type of actinic keratosis, they can, in 20 to 40 percent, sometimes develop into skin cancer called squamous cell carcinoma. There are a lot of reasons why those things start to happen, but it's basically something that appears later on in life unless genetically you have some mutations. Most people it's after the age of 40. Why? Because after a while our body's ability to repair the DNA damage is weakened. And the way I think about it is if your body has to concentrate on what it feels is important to keep in good condition, it says, well, let me take care of the heart, let me take care of the liver, of the spleen, of the bones. And it kind of leaves the skin a little bit as a, you know, faraway cousin. It's not, not having enough energy for it. So one of the things that we're doing is we're trying to give supplements. Are you taking the NMN, by the yeah, way? Yeah, yeah. Super, excellent. So we're giving supplements in order to improve the energy that the body has because it has all the factories necessary to self-repair itself. So we give it the necessary energy so it can repair other areas, not only keep you know, control over the important organs like the brain and, and other body parts, but also the skin. That's one thing. The second thing, obviously, we try to protect it from future damage, kind of like the Iron Dome in Israel. So we're using a sunblock. We don't want to prevent all sun exposure because we have low vitamin D, we can take supplements, vitamin D with K3. And then the other thing that we do is we fight it. And there are three ways we can fight it. We can fight with spray. Liquid nitrogen works about 90% of the time. The benefit is that it's quick. The minus is that it works only as well as our eyes. So if let's say we look and we don't see it, well, that precancer will be unnoticed and will continue to grow, which is why I have special lighting in here. And if we look very carefully on his nose, he won't see it. But if you go in closer with the light on and shadow, can you, do you have to press focus, let's see, so it shows it, right? It focuses on the spot. Can, can you see that spot there? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so if you see that spot right there, if you feel it, it's a little rough. Can you feel it with your hand? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it feels a little rough. Now, being rough by itself is not a precancer, but seeing that red and rough skin, that's the precancer. And then we've got some others that are on the scalp as well. Uh, but it's definitely better than what it was. Definitely better than what it was. So I'm very proud of you. And, and he's in Florida and he's protecting himself. But this is, again, as I said, it's uh, something that's accumulating over the years. That's one thing. So one thing is liquid nitrogen. The, other, the, the effectiveness is about 90%. Very often you see the clearance in the center when you spray it, but then the precancer is on the edges. Why? Because microscopically your eye is not able to see the microscopic cells and so it does not remove it all. The other option is using creams. There are a variety of creams anywhere from topical chemotherapy uh, medications like 5 few, and other medication like uh, Solaris Diclofenac which uh, works we're not sure how but it helps remove like a chemical peel some of the upper layer of the skin brings down the inflammation and sometimes causes inflammation. People who either overuse it or have a reaction to it. Another cream that we use is uh, something that stimulates our immune cells. It kind of tells them that these are areas you need to concentrate on. It's like the alarm bell, like 911, it calls them, go over here, fight it. And you apply it, depending on the protocol, usually three times a week. The problem is it's sometimes it's a really, really bad reaction you get, and it looks like you're on fire, red, irritated. The uh, 5 fluorouracil the chemotherapy drug, the way I like to do it is I like to use like a litmus test in Russian, latmus of So you apply mm -hmm. it on and it highlights the areas. Now, after a week that you use it, you're able to see where exactly the precancer cells are. And then I use the spray, the liquid nitrogen, because now I combine the cream, which by itself gives about 78% effectiveness, with the spray, which together give synergistic effect, and so it works 95% of the time. And then the third option, which makes life much easier, especially if you don't want to put the creams on, is the photodynamic therapy. But dynamic therapy is uh, invented in the 1970s, and it was a combination of light with a chemical. So you apply a chemical that is photosensitizing the area to the light, and then you put the light on after the chemical has left the other cells except where it's concentrated in the precancerous cells. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, in order for you to penetrate better, 
what you need to do is you need to a little bit debride the cells, um, the upper layers, kind of like um, a batting ram. If you want to go through the walls of a castle, you need to ram through the door, right. make a little opening, and then you can let your soldiers in. The same idea we're doing here. So this is a little bit of a fine. And if you look at it now, it's opened up a little bit, it's less rough than what it was. And since I did it, it will be able to accept the cream more effectively. It will absorb inside. And we're doing the same thing to the scalp. And after we're done with that, it'll be as smooth as an ice skating ring. <laughs> All right. Any pain? No, I shouldn't feel pain. And after we do that, a little bit on the cheek also. Do you want me to do the cheek too? And you can see those little red spots that are a little bit there too. Yeah, if you focus on it, you can see it. You can become famous. Now, the benefit of the photodynamic dynamic therapy, not that we're doing it for that reason, is that you also have improvement in the skin texture and quality. So it's kind of like you consider, some people talk about photofacial, so they can do that to just reduce wrinkles because it does improve collagen as well. Um, some people have used laser resurfacing, CO2 laser resurfacing, in order to fight precancers. And as a matter of fact, there was a patient who asked me about it. Oh, there's something new. I was like, oh my God, new. I remember it, we were talking about in the 1990s to, to do this treatment for precancers. But you know, every time someone really discovers old stuff and says they're the ones who discovered it and somehow they get attention but it's nothing new and uh, I personally don't like it because it's not as effective in my opinion as doing that and it's much more expensive so all right now we're gonna put the cream on uh -huh. we can use a q-tip or we can use a glove or we can use it in our hand I had a, uh, a glove, sorry, and I'll take the cream on, and I'm going to apply it on those areas. So put it here, and lay it on the, on the nose where we did it. Now, theoretically, you, should, you can apply it all over the place, but sometimes you can get a reaction even if there is no precancerous cells there, so I don't want to overdo it, and most importantly, the scalp. Now, on the scalp, they say that you need to incubate it, meaning leave mm -hmm. it on for a little longer. So when we're gonna start the treatment, we'll start the treatment from the nose, then cheek, and then the other cheek, and then we'll do the scalp last. Beautiful. You did very, very well. And uh, how do you feel? Burning, painful? A little bit, that's fine. A little I, stinging I, I, as we applied it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, last time that you did it, can, can you tell them how, how did it feel? Did you have a lot of redness? Was it burning? No, it wasn't. It was a little burn and that's it. And how long was that? After, after all, after the procedure, I was great. You were great. How was, long was, 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 was there swelling or redness after that, day or two after? Um, the redness was uh, gone in maybe two days. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. Were you able to function, you able to go out? It's Absolutely. Okay, yeah, wonderful. It was, it was okay. So it's important to tell people that after this procedure, because the chemical is still in the skin, to be careful going in direct sunlight. Now, we get into the car and we forget that the sun still passes through, while UVB doesn't pass through windshield glass, UVA does pass, it's different wavelengths, it's, uh, whatever it's details, but, but it's 290 to 310 is UVB. Um, and 310 to 400 is UVA. So UVA passes through the windshield glass and it will activate it as well. Uh, and, and therefore you should wear a sunblock and make sure that you are not trying to tan. Otherwise you'll get a much worse reaction or you'll be like in the car like, oh my God, something is burning. What on earth is burning? And it's like, oh yeah, Dr. Levitt told me, be careful, put sunblock and I forgot. So that's, that's basically it. And you look like you had a sunburn. Yeah, me never forgot to put sunblock. Yeah, all right. Even, well, on, the, in, the, even on the winter time. Yeah? yeah. Wow, impressive. Well, Every morning. Oh, well, you look very good. You look very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for allowing us to share. Thank the you very much, Doctor. Thank you. I appreciate it.